I think every speaker has in some way acknowledged it. We're not going to talk about uh, the pandemic that's going on, but you just wrote a kind of a response in your Dear Therapist column. Uh, tell us a little bit about that column and what kind of reactions are you getting? You took a very unique angle on this whole thing. So uh, share with us what that was all about. Yeah, you know, anytime I write that column, I really want to take a broader view. So it's not a very prescriptive column. It's not like here are five tips you should try at home. Um, it's very much about what's happening in our internal worlds, because I think we need to be able to get more familiar with them so we can use them in a way that serves us. And so what I talked about in that column was um, sort of the both and of the situation, which is something I talk a lot with my clients about. And what I mean by that is I posted something on Twitter where I said, if I can't touch my face soon, I think I might need to go to therapy. And a lot of people responded to that because it was like, we're all in this together. It might sound trivial, but this is, this is part of what's going on in this very surreal situation. And one person tweeted back, not funny. And what I tweeted back to that person was that sometimes when we are facing a horrible situation, for many of us, humor is a balm and we need to give our souls some room to breathe. And that's the both and that I was talking about in the column. So the both and was I would walk by my son who's doing remote learning right now because the schools are closed. And I would say, I am so happy to see you, even though I'm not happy about the circumstances under which I'm needing to see him. That's both and. And I wrote in the column about a, a patient that I saw who, um, who had cancer and, and she felt like, and the people around her felt like, well, we can't laugh about things. We can't joke about things because then we're minimizing the fact that this person has cancer. And yet what they needed so much was to have some normalcy to live alongside the horror of her situation, the fear, the anxiety, all of that. And so that's the both and that I think we all need to live in right now. And I also talk a lot about in that column about the difference between productive anxiety and unproductive anxiety, which I think applies to any situation, not just the current pandemic. And that's that productive anxiety is, you know, it's, it's adaptive where if something is not right, we need to feel anxiety about it or else we would not react well to it. So, um, you know, we need to be worried about this or we wouldn't be isolating, social distancing, washing our hands until they're chapped, you know, all of those things. We need to do that. That's productive anxiety. How can I be productive with, because I need to be worrying about this? Unproductive anxiety is obsessive rumination. It's futurizing, catastrophizing, thinking about something that has not happened yet, but that's where your, all your emotional real estate is going. So I wanted people to think about those two concepts as we're going through these really challenging times.